Okay, hello everybody. Um, today we're going to be trimming up my Green Giant Arborvitae trees. They are, you know, they're getting pretty old. I grew them from tiny little cuttings about this big and now they are 20 feet tall plus. I'm gonna have to use a ladder, but they have some double tops on a couple of them and they're just kind of getting bushy and out of control and at the same time uh, I was looking at them when I was mowing my grass and you can kind of see light through them and there's kind of some thin spots. So I'm hoping maybe if I trim them up then they'll bush a little bit and fill in in some areas. But uh, we're gonna get on this here and we're gonna go outside. I'll use my electric trimmer and some hand trimmers and a ladder and I'll be right back with you. So here we are outside and we're gonna take a look at these things. These arborvitaes have really long uh, tips, the tops of them, the, the, the leaders, they grow really fast. I mean, see how they're just shooting up? I mean, you got two and a half feet of growth there that's just a tall, spindly tip. And I thought some of those, I thought that was a double tip right in the middle of your screen there, but that's actually a tree. That's the top of a tree, so you don't want to cut that top off unless you just don't, unless you wanted to keep them short. But, um, you can just see how long those leaders are and they just shoot up and when they start growing they'll grow three or four feet a year at least so it's critical when they're young especially the first five years the first several years you have got to get in there and maintain these things because um, they'll start growing all kinds of double tops and you'll have double shoots and you need to eliminate the doubles and just stick with the main central leader and get them shaped up and growing vertical or they'll just go all over the place and have leaders all over. So you got to just trim all those uh, double tops and keep the side branches under control. And once they've established themselves and you have that main central leader going and you got the sides kind of trimmed up like a nice little Christmas tree, they'll shoot up like a rocket. Now I've let mine go for several years because I mean they've been established and they've been doing really well growing vertically. I mean you can see how tall they are. This is actually the shortest one of them all because it's in a shady spot and it's actually really wet right there too. I had a hard time getting them to take in that area and um, the soil was really mushy and they were kind of falling over under their own weight. But um, they finally just kind of uh, grew up out of that muck and started taking off. But anyways, um, they've been doing really well and I let them go for several years. But there's a lot of leaders on them that are just, you can, those long, stretchy, two foot long leaders. And um, they're looking a little bit thin in some spots, like I said in the intro. So I'm just going to come in here today and do a quick job of going down the side and just buzzing off those long tips and just kind of get them to where now that they're in really heavy vegetative growth in the spring they should they have five more months of strong growing and hopefully they'll bush in sideways instead of wanting to go vertical so much and I can get some of those thin spots to, to fill in um, and I'll keep some water on them this year but that's what I'm after here, just kind of a quick job um, to shape them up a little bit. And I also kind of trimmed up around the, the very bottom along the ground because of all the branches are in the dirt and, and the mower is like getting hung up in them all. So I kind of trimmed them up out of the dirt a little bit and just knocked off some of the, some of the uh, leaders and um, I'm hoping to get them to push up this year. And I think you can trim these things pretty much year round, especially once they're established and they're growing and their roots are fine and everything. Uh, they'll, you can trim these things year round. It just doesn't bother them. They're so hardy. I don't think they'll have any problems getting trimmed in the spring right now. Like I said, they're in heavy vegetative growth and there's rapid cell division going on. And I think uh, they'll just take right back off and hopefully fill in this year. I think within two years, it'll be, they'll be really nice and full. So you can see what I did to that little bush there. I just kind of knocked some of those long tips off and I cleaned up uh, behind the wood pile there um, just to get all that stuff out of my patio and it's all into the wood pile and everything. So I just kind of knocked those branches off real quick. But um, I'm just gonna kind of continue on and I'm using this Greenworks trimmer here. 
I'll post a link for that in the description for my Amazon Associates account. Um, it really does a good job and um, I did this whole row and only I didn't use all the battery. Um, I did one half of my trees and then I took the battery in and plugged it in for 10 minutes while I kind of raked up and everything and then I did the other half and I had no problems with the battery running low or anything and that gives you a pretty good you know extra two foot of reach and it just it just does a good job buzzing right along and it'll cut branches like a half inch around roughly maybe a little bit more sometimes but I've been pretty happy with that thing and I mean you can see the job that it's doing here it's good for all kinds of uh, trimming I mean whether it's boxwood or arborvitaes or whatever kind of hedges you have it's done a really good job and it's lightweight uh, you can see I can use it with one hand it just does a pretty good job so check the link in the description and if you want one purchase it it's springtime it's a good time of the year to buy this kind of stuff So here I noticed I found a little bird's nest in my backyard and hopefully I didn't knock any of the eggs out. There's still one egg left in there and I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. I know it's not a robin because I think robins lay uh, blue eggs. They're like sky blue. So this is some kind of finch or something that's in here and I tried to get a good shot of it. It takes me a minute but I have all kinds of wildlife in my backyard and you know I have a lot of habitat for them and I don't bother them at all um, from all of these trees that I've been cutting down and everything all the treetops see there's that egg in there there's only one though so hopefully the bird comes back and hopefully that uh, baby makes it as I was saying I have a lot of wildlife and I don't bother them like I don't have kids playing in my backyard and I'm not out there all the time playing music and doing a bunch of crazy stuff partying. So it's nice and quiet for all the animals and they just make themselves right at home. Plus I have a lot of clover in my yard and I don't like spraying chemicals. Um, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with this weed situation um, next year or so because I'm going to have to start pulling it out by hand and get some mulch down. Um, sometimes in my front yard I, I spray for the weeds, but I do not like doing that. I feel bad because the rabbits eat that stuff and I don't want to hurt any of the wildlife. So I'm going to just have to get some mulch down and start, um, start weeding by hand. Um, it, it would be the safest thing to do. I have a lot of variety though in my weeds. Um, I have some type of wild little raspberry berry looking things that are growing and all kinds of clover and broadleaf leaves and I even have some poison ivy that I find here in a little bit and I just kind of snipped that off and um, kind of pulled it away from the tree with the tools a little bit and I'm hoping that it just dries up. Now I didn't pull it out of the roots so if it shoots up some new shoots I'll take some Roundup out there and just kind of paint the weeds with like a Q-tip or something just real lightly and hopefully that Roundup will be systemic and if I can just get it right on those leaves without spilling it anywhere else on my trees or anything, um, hopefully it'll get in there and be systemic and kill the rest of the vine. But that's something else you have to be careful with with Roundup is if you're just spraying it all over the place. It's not good for your trees or your shrubs or anything else that it gets on. Um, I mean, if there's exposed roots from all your shrubs around and everything, it could absorb it. And I don't want to keep doing that because if I, you know, if you look at my other videos, I'm making these clones and everything and trying to get more arborvitae and more boxwoods. And I want to get mulch down and get some plants down next year. You can't just go through and then spray Roundup all over the place because it'll kill all that stuff. I mean, obviously, but even if you're careful, if there's exposed roots and things and it just gets on there, I feel like it really affects the longevity of your plants. I mean, even if it doesn't kill them immediately, you might just kind of have a slow 
death taking place if that roundup is in there just kind of circulating through the plant material so I don't like doing that Well, now I've got the step ladder out and I'm going to try to get up as high as I can and give these things one last trim here. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to do that this year because I've let these go several years without touching them. I mean, it's been at least three or four years and I haven't done anything to them. So I want to get up here and try to get as high as I can and shape them up a little bit before they get completely out of reach, which they already are. I mean, I can't reach the top of these things. I think that's an eight foot step ladder and then I'm, you know, six feet tall and that tool is two feet tall also and I'm not even close to the tops of them. Um, the, the largest ones I could still go up another ten feet or more. So I want to get them shaped up the best I can, um, as high up as I can and get all of those long extra leaders cut off so they stay nice and bushy and full and fill in and make a nice privacy hedge. And then uh, going forward, you know, they're getting too large to reach up there. So, I mean, you can always reach the base of them, but uh, this is going to be about the last year that I'm going to be able to reach those leaders. So I wanted to hit them real quick while I can and try to get, you know, get them shaped up a little bit before they get completely out of touch. So this little guy was actually hiding right under the bushes and I had moved him over out of the way but this box turtle lives here. He's a resident and I can tell because of the mark on his shell he may have gotten nicked with a lawnmower or something. I don't know but I've seen him several times around and he just hangs out.
here's what we're left with as a finished product here. You can see how I got the branches up off the ground where I can run the lawnmower down there a little bit easier. Now I am a little bit kind of concerned because those lower branches were helping to block the light and kind of keep it moist down there and hold the water in. So I'll just need to spray some water and keep them wet this year and make sure they don't dry out, especially if we have another drought year. But you can see here's that first bush that I did and it's shaped up pretty nicely. And I got down behind my wood pile and kind of made a nice straight line so the branches weren't all in that wood. And I don't really want any bugs that could be in that, in that wood that's seasoning to get into my plants. So I just trimmed them back. But if you saw me stomping on that bee a few videos back, that was a wood bee. And here's what it does to my deck. Um, it was completely hollowing out the bottom of my deck. Those cavities go back up in there several inches. And you can see that one little round hole. That's the perfect size for a little carpenter bee or wood bee or whatever they are. Those big fat bumblebees. See that round hole? That's just big enough for one of them to burrow in there. And I also had a couple uh, mud daubers making a home it looks like. But those wood bees are not uh, good for your deck if they start eating it.